Um, how do the, mem the other members of Shiota feel about it? Are they disappointed that you're doing like other things or? No, I don't think they really care. Um, they get a month off at home. We've been like literally like I got back from London. I practiced with this band one time yesterday, and now I'm on tour. Um, that's not something. I mean, the, a lot of the guys just like to drink and have fun and be lazy, and uh, you know I do too, obviously. But they get to do that for a month at home by themselves, chilling. Uh, Brad obviously um, is out here with me, but um, I don't think they're really jealous. We've never really had a sit down, let me hear your feelings kind of thing. But we're just a bunch of dudes. Like it's not like we we worry about stuff like that. Like it's not like we're in a weird boyfriend girlfriend relationship <laughs> where they're gonna get jealous that I'm hanging out with other people like they they don't own me I, I write music and they're they're never gonna be able to tell me that I can't do this or that um, and it's the same way for me with them uh, Jason has a side project that he works on um, and obviously Brad's with me and, and uh, Matt is married so that's kind of a side project has Pat has his computer um, which is his side project and Derek really is, is just a hippie <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I'm not jealous of those things, so they shouldn't be jealous of this. <laughs> Are you guys trying to target, like, a different audience with Cinematic Sunrise, or do you still want to, like, see the same old faces from Chiodos in the crowd? I'd love to see the same old faces because I really think it's amazing when people understand and, and kind of think outside of the bubble that's forced upon a lot of people these days. But, um, you know, just you have to like this or this or that because of the sound. Um, so I hope I get to see a lot of the same faces. And, and from the feedback that I've gotten um, from everybody, I really have, um, I really believe it's going to be a lot of the same faces. But I'd love to see new faces as well. I mean, people are people, pretty much. And I, I don't really care either way as long as they're having a good time. It, my music still sounds the same, and I'm still on stage with the same people. What are your plans after this short tour with My American Heart? Cinematic? Yeah. Can I answer it? Well, we're going to go do a weekend warp tour, and then we're going to do some writing. Yeah. You're and, ready uh, for the full length. Full length. I mean, that's the main thing. Marcus, your plan? I, I'm, I'm on board with that one. That's my plan, too. Warp <laughs> tour, write, record. Good times, maybe some shows. Holla dog. More hanging out. Yeah. What's that game you like to play? Catchphrase? What's up? That's one we play? What's the game we play? Yeah. Catchphrase? Yeah, catchphrase. Yeah, we're <laughs> taboo. Or ta we're going to play a, a lot of catchphrase and taboo also. That's our plans after the tour. I'm going to go home in my bed for a while. Start a league. <laughs> Start a league in my bed. Um, I'm yeah, I'm good. just going to sleep. <laughs> I'm going to go home and, and rest up for a while um, before the, the cinematic dates because that's the next thing that we have. More good times. Yep. Reynolds from Georgia wants to know what you gave you guys the idea to do a coloring book idea for the EP. Well, I took a class in college in which we had to think of creative things to come up with. So I sat there all day and they're like, sell your product in a certain way. And all of a sudden I text Craig in the middle of the class, I'm like, coloring book. And he's like, what is this all about? I'm like, our CD is going to be a coloring book. And I didn't think that he, I say a lot of silly ideas yeah, like that all lot. the time. A lot. It wasn't lot. until like this September when like Craig's like, you know, the coloring book idea. And I'm like, whoa, are we actually going to consider that one? Yeah, and then uh, the people at Equal Vision were nice enough to actually pull it together. It's amazing. Um, it was supposed to be crayons, Equal Vision. I don't know why they're colored pencils. I'm talking to the camera. Equal Vision, <laughs> you. But then you. you. <laughs> but um, I, I opened it up, and all of a sudden I see colored pencils, and I wasn't even notified about this. Tell me why. But, yeah. <laughs> At least you got a CD before everyone else did. I had to wait. <laughs> you guys all text me and go, it looks awesome. And I sat there at home all, like, sad. I'm sorry. It was a sad day in my life. You guys are all like, <laughs> you did too. You did the most. Why? Because I hate you. <laughs> and I, in 40 years from now, when I'm in therapy, I'll have that clip we're playing over and over. Because I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Carlos from New Jersey wants to ask Craig, what's your advice on trying to be in a band and like practicing his voice and trying to find like the right people to play with? Um, do you want me to hold it? No, I like holding it. You can make the job. Try. I mean, basically, all it is is just practice, practice, practice. Um, don't listen to what other people have to say. Um, believe in yourself. Be be confident. Um, um, you know, I've, I've been told, I still get told by people that I look up to that, you know, what, it, what I do is, is not good enough or, um, 
you know, you, you feel a certain way. And uh, really all you have to do is just push through and believe in yourself. And, uh, you know, it sounds cheesy, like one of those posters you'd see in the high school wall, but it really is true. Like, just practice and be yourself. And, um, you know, it's, it's all about the drive. Don't give up. Don't give up no matter what anybody um, says, even if, even if you look up to them. Casey from New York wants to know what it's it like waking up each day, knowing that so many people like idolize you guys and you guys inspire so many people. But we don't. It, it's awesome, but we don't think that. Um, never really. I mean, I I wake up and I want orange juice, <laughs> um, and I'm just chilling in my underwear, scratching my butt, pretty much. I mean, it's not. We don't we don't really think about that kind of stuff. Um, you know, it's. It's, it's a lot different from the outside perspective. Um, you know, it's a lot different from the outside perspective. So, you know, you just, you wake up and you're just a normal person. Definitely. So. Joe from Florida wants to know when you're coming out with your book. I wonder if that's Joe I know. Probably. Is. I love Joe. Joe, if that's you. I got the end, Joe. Um, I'm gonna, I'm trying to finish up my book right now when I'm home after this tour. It'll be my first time off since January. Um, I haven't had more than three days at home since January. So once I can actually get at home and uh, wrap my head around it, um, it's going to just go by and go through. Um, so next year or the year after that, um, it'll be done and uh, released. And Alexis from Peoria wants to know for Craig, when was, like, how old were you and you and your first band? Uh, Chiotis is actually my first band. Um, First song I wrote, I was 15 years old, and that's Lindsay Quit Lollygagging. And that was it. Thank you guys so much for doing the interview, and have a great show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Blah, blah, blah.